Have Red Bull and Ferrari been left behind in an area of F1 aerodynamic dark arts? The two teams are chasing a mastery of the aero elasticity trick being so well utilised by McLaren and Mercedes, whereby their front wings bend more into a lower drag form under load at high speed, then snap back into a normal position under braking to provide downforce in the corners. Unsurprisingly, it's McLaren that's getting the most attention at the moment, partly because of footage that emerged from the most recent race weekend at Monza showing how much its front wing deformed on the straights, and partly because it's the team to beat right now after making unparalleled progress in this rules era. In the space of 18 months, McLaren has improved from struggling to score points to being a regular victory contender and a surprise challenger in both 2024 championships, as Red Bull has hit various problems and admits to being confused technically. McLaren's now considered the favourite in the constructors' contest after outscoring Red Bull nine times in the last 10 races to close the gap from 115 points to just eight, and the team starting to take Lando Norris's outside shot at the driver's title more seriously too. The team led by Andrea Stella has not put a foot wrong in development since it started to move towards the front last year, initially with an Azerbaijan Grand Prix upgrade in late April that laid the foundations for a major step forward in Austria in early July. Its prolific upgrades have been unmatched since then. It had a slightly slow start to 2024 as its biggest winter developments couldn't make it onto the new car until round six in Miami. But with some of its high speed supremacy traded to improve performance in the slower turns, McLaren has transformed into an all rounder that's a threat at every track. With that has come increased scrutiny from rivals with Red Bull and Ferrari trying to bring pressure over what they clearly consider an unreasonable amount of flexing in the front wing. After Red Bull was beaten by McLaren at Zandvoort, team boss Christian Horner said the front wings of the McLaren and Mercedes were very, very different to the rest of the grid. And at Monza, where Red Bull was the most lost it's been all season, Horner cited the fact the rules were tweaked in 2021 after scrutiny of Red Bull's front wing, but called it an FIA issue and said, we'll leave it with them. His Ferrari counterpart, Fred Vasseur, was less cryptic, stating he would have a conversation with FIA single-seater boss Nicholas Tombassis and revive the discussion, which has been rumbling along in the background for months. Flexible bodywork is a complicated challenge, one of those areas where the ever-stubborn laws of physics refuse to allow easy answers. A line has to be drawn somewhere, but it's imprecise. You might even say flexible. Making the most of the flexibility that must be allowed in aerodynamic parts, given they cannot be entirely rigid or they'd break under the forces involved when an F1 car's at speed, is vital to making these cars work. All wings deform under load to some extent, the challenge is having the control to do this predictably, reliably and safely while passing the FIA's strict load tests. Although the floor is the dominant downforce generator in this ground effect era of cars, the front wing is still a powerful component. In addition to the traditional drag gains on the straights of a wing that deforms sufficiently but predictably, a wing that backs off under load can be a great help in this rule set. These cars can generate a lot of slow speed understeer with all the rear downforce that comes further back in the car from the floor, but they can also have a high speed oversteer. That's because the front wing also produces massive downforce in ground effect, which is when the wing is low to the ground under big load. Finding a balance between those two states is very difficult, as if you just crank up the wing to get better slow speed performance, the car will be impossibly unstable at high speed. But if your front wing deforms more under load, that means it will be backing off into and through faster corners, not just on the straights. And in doing so, will offer a bit less wing angle in the quicker corners than in the slow ones, making it easier to strike a better balance. Mercedes struggled with this exact dilemma before a revised front wing earlier this year helped give it a better connection between high speed and low speed performance. And at the time, technical director James Allison openly discussed how aero elasticity played into that development. The tricky part is that teams don't have total freedom in this area, quite the opposite. F1's regulations on flexible bodywork are ostensibly straightforward. Other than specifically defined exceptions, Article 3.2.2 of the technical regulations states that all aerodynamic components or bodywork influencing the car's aerodynamic performance must be rigidly secured and immobile. This regulation is augmented by various technical directives to make sure that the FIA and the teams have a common understanding of where the FIA will draw the line. It is effectively policed by stringent static load deflection tests laid out in the technical regulations that the FIA has the necessary equipment to apply. The rules permit a certain amount of flexibility during these tests, which have continuously evolved and been refined to be as comprehensive an eligibility check as is possible. The FIA is actively studying the amount of flexibility from front wings, and there's the possibility of changes based on what it's learned, but not until next year. 
and it has moved to stress that all front wings, including those used by Mercedes and McLaren, are currently compliant with the 2024 regulations. That means they passed all of the load tests and the FIA hasn't seen anything untoward in other analysis. Starting at the Belgian Grand Prix just before the summer break, the FIA began to measure front wing deformation on track more closely, using additional FIA cameras housed on the nose looking sideways, as the usual forward facing cameras used for broadcasts do not capture the complete front wing. This will continue at least until Singapore in late September so that every team will have been running the mandated FIA camera on different types of track, from low to very high downforce. It will give the FIA a big set of data from which it will be able to draw the most objective picture of the situation, quantify differences between what it's seen from each team, and then make amendments as necessary for future regulations. There is nothing imminent in the offing. The FIA has reiterated in a statement that it has the right to introduce new tests if regularities are suspected, but said there are no plans for any short-term measures. Its actions are therefore part of the ongoing battle being fought to keep such dark arts under control. Realistically though, success in governing this can only ever really be about containing it to tolerable levels. Inevitably, given this is F1 and top teams are either pointing the finger or have had the finger pointed at them in the past, Red Bull and Ferrari have been on the other side of this before. In the early 2010s, flexible front wings were a major battleground that led to increasing intensity of load tests and other clarifications, such as preventing any form of mechanical spring mechanism embedded in parts. That means there is a long evolving history of what is and isn't allowed, which makes a common understanding difficult to achieve. It's partly down to the opacity of the regulations and the FIA's lack of transparency in making technical directives public. But it's also down to the impossibility of the rules. The wording about rigidity is all well and good, but it has to work in the real world. And the fact is that taken literally, entirely rigid bodywork parts are not possible. That goes for the loads that the parts are under when at high speed on track, but also the extra spikes caused by the fact they are attached to a vehicle that's hitting bumps and curbs. There must be some compliance or parts would simply fail, potentially in extremely dangerous ways. If teams are finding new ways to create unexpected and undesirable levels of deformation, the simple solution is to make the load tests more stringent. But this requires custom designed purpose-built and portable pieces of equipment that can safely conduct these tests in situ on Grand Prix weekends. That is neither cheap nor easy and maybe not something the FIA can afford on its own. If there is to be no intervention this season and a rival is convinced that there is an illegal amount of flexing going on somewhere else, then they could just simply lodge a protest. Theoretically, the stewards could measure the flexibility against the wording of the regulations and the documented history and maybe even any visible evidence from footage of the cars on track and make a ruling. It would be complicated, but if a team has the conviction of its beliefs that someone else is going too far, then that's the arena for it to be tested. Otherwise, if you can't beat them, you have to join them. Red Bull's position is more delicate than Ferrari's given its dramatic slump over the course of 2024, but both have had their development problems in this rules cycle. Ferrari keeps getting close without ever emphatically kicking on, so remains a sporadic victory contender at best. It repeatedly bumps up against porpoising problems, and there are questions about how well integrated its mechanical and aerodynamic elements are, so maybe it has been missing a trick in this key area. As for Red Bull, it has fallen from grace quite dramatically this year, from F1's dominant team to at Monza being nowhere near scoring a podium. In trying to unpick the wrong turn it's taken with its development, Red Bull has conducted various in-weekend experiments by trying different floors, and is now at a stage of trying to work out which developments to prioritise in the short gap to the next race in Azerbaijan. But it looks lost from a development perspective with a disconnected car balance. The rear is unstable, and when that's addressed, the car has too much understeer. So remember our explanation earlier on, and how a front wing that flexes more might help with exactly this. A change of its own in this area could help Red Bull achieve a more consistent balance across a wide range of corner speeds, and make use of the extra downforce its other developments around the floor have supposedly added. The question is whether Red Bull's capable of doing this, and was just waiting for the FIA to 100% confirm that these kinds of wings are legal before committing to that direction, or if it was hoping that the FIA would come down hard on McLaren and Mercedes and remove a trick that Red Bull can't quite master.